Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to look at the autopilot in the FAA-18 Super Hornet and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I just took off from Fairbanks in Alaska, and the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in to the UFCD, or the Upfront Control Display. And that's this system right here in the middle. And what we can do is just press this AP button to access the different autopilot modes that are available. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually press the autopilot button on my stick. The two default modes are FPAH, which is flight path angle hold, and heading mode, which is obviously heading hold mode. So with autopilot enabled like this, I can do two things really easily. One is enter a bank. So I'm just going to hold left to bank over here at about 30 degrees, and then I'm letting go of my stick. Heading mode isn't actually just a heading hold. It's actually more of a bank hold. So when I roll to the left like this and let go of the stick, it's holding my bank approximately where I brought it to. So you can see it's at about 30 to 33 degrees. And then when I roll my wings level, heading mode will actually bring our heading to straight ahead here. As long as it's within these five degree tick marks, it'll bring us wings level and hold our current heading. Flight path angle hold mode is an attitude hold. So if I pull back on my stick, like this, you can see we're pitching up about more than five degrees here. And what it's gonna do is just hold that attitude or pitch for us. So you can see that we're climbing at 5,400 feet per minute and we're at an altitude of almost 20,000 feet. So if I wanna descend, all I have to do is push forward on the stick. Now you can see that we're pitching down at about 3,000 feet per minute. And once again, I've just let go of the stick. So you can almost think of this default autopilot mode kind of like the A320's fly-by-wire system. So all I have to do is pull to the left and then pull up. And now I'm in a climbing left-hand turn. And now I've just let go of my stick. So I'm climbing at 2,000 feet per minute and I'm banked over to the left at about 30 degrees. And until I make any changes, it'll just hold this. And what I can do next is use the barometric altitude hold mode to hold us at our current altitude. So all I have to do is click on this B Alt button right here, and you can see it snaps to the nearest 100 feet or so in altitude. So it snapped to 20,000 feet, and it's gonna hold us at 20,000 feet. But what's cool is as soon as I pull back or forward on my stick, it'll automatically switch to flight path angle hold. So you can see down here, it's automatically changed to flight path angle hold mode. So I can do a climb and say I want to get up to 21,000 feet. I'll wait until we get to 21,000 feet and then hit the BALT button again to hold us at that altitude. So I'll just click it and now it pitches the nose back down and it'll go down and hold us at 21,000 feet. So there's no way to specify an altitude to climb or descend to. You have to do the climbing and descending manually. And then when you get to the altitude you want to hold at, you simply hit the BALT button. Now there is another altitude hold mode here that unfortunately isn't working right now, but hopefully this will be fixed at some point after I've made this video so you can use it. But if you get below 5,000 feet AGL or above the ground, you can enable the radar altitude hold mode. And what that'll do is use the radar altimeter that's built into the Super Hornet, which detects how high above the ground you are. So this will let you automatically stay a certain height above the ground. So in theory, this should be able to pitch the plane up and down to conform with the terrain in front of it. So as you come up to a slight incline, it would keep you at that altitude above the ground as the terrain is changing in front of you. Next, we're gonna look at selected heading and selected ground track modes. So we're currently in heading mode and being held at 21,000 feet. I'm gonna go down here to our map and there's also an HSI laid on top of this map. Here in the bottom left, you can see our heading select, and that's what we're gonna change right now using this switch right here. So if I click and hold this to one direction, or if I use my mouse and just roll the mouse wheel, you'll see it updating this selected heading number right here. And you'll also see the little selected heading bug here change as I do the same. Now all I have to do to switch to selected heading mode is once I'm on the heading mode and it's activated, I just hit it again to go to heading select mode. So you can see what's activated with that thicker green border. So if I was in a different mode, I would need to hit heading mode first and then hit it a second time to arm heading select mode. So now you can see that the plane is banking to the left and it'll bank to and get to a heading of 060 as we selected and then it'll just hold us there. Now, if you want, you can change this right screen to show an HSI instead. Since this map down here is pretty hard to see when you're in some of the default camera views, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the HSI on here 
And you do that by hitting the bottom center button first, and then hit the fourth button down on the left right here next to the label HSI. And now we have another HSI here without the map in the background. All right, now that the autopilot's holding us at a heading of roughly 060, you can see we're actually bouncing around a little bit because of the wind that we have here. So this is a good chance to use ground track mode instead. Because the wind's affecting our course that we're flying on, what we can do is just hit ground track. And instead of it holding our heading straight ahead, it's gonna try to hold our ground track instead so it'll compensate for the wind. Now, ground track also has a selected ground track mode. And that actually uses the same setting we set before. So we have our heading selected 060. If we instead use ground track select, so I'll hit this again. So it says GSEL. So that's ground track selected mode. You can see that the label down here changed to GSEL. So we're following a ground track of 060 instead of a heading of 060. Next, we're gonna learn about navigating using our flight plan and waypoints. So what I've done is I loaded in a flight plan from the world map before I got into the Super Hornet. And I chose not only my departure and arrival, but I also chose my approach. And that's because if ATC gives you a different approach or if you wanna change your waypoints or anything, there's no way to do that within the Super Hornet just yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is zoom in to our HSI here. And what we can do is show our current flight plan by hitting this sequence one button down here. So I'm gonna click on that and we don't see anything. And that's cause I'm zoomed out to 40 miles and I've been flying around for a while. So I'm gonna hit this scale button in the top center to go all the way out to 160. Now we can see our flight plan or our route over here to the west. The next thing I can do is choose a waypoint. This little dot and arrow right here is pointing towards our selected waypoint. And you can change the selected waypoint by using these two buttons on the right. You can see that we're on waypoint zero, which is actually the first waypoint. And as I hit this up button, it'll change the waypoint. And you can actually see the arrow here moving to point to the next waypoint. So because I've been flying off track for a while, I'm just gonna choose one of these waypoints first. Let's choose waypoint number four, which is visible right over here. And I want us to fly towards it. So to fly towards it, we use what's called the coupled steering mode. And that's used by this couple button, CPL, right here in the top left. But if I hit it, nothing happens. And that's because we have to couple it to a type of destination or waypoint to get to. So we just need to hit this waypoint button in the top right of our HSI. And now you can see that waypoint has a box around it and that it now says coupled waypoint. So if we hit this, it'll automatically turn us to that waypoint that we have selected. Now this is a very simple navigation system. All we can do is tell it which waypoint to go directly to. It's not gonna fly a leg for us automatically between two waypoints. It's almost like using a direct to, except it's just using heading. It's not even using a course or ground track to get to this waypoint. So it's a very unsophisticated system, but we can use it to get from one waypoint to the next to the next. Now that we've activated that waypoint, we can see some information about it. Right here on the HUD, it shows coupled waypoint. It shows the distance to that waypoint in miles, and then it shows the number of the waypoint we're headed to. So I chose waypoint number four from our flight plan. And then down here on the HSI, you can see our bearing to the waypoint, and again, the distance, and then our estimated time to reach that waypoint. So we're about to cross over waypoint five. You can see it's flashing to let us know we're about to cross over it. And you'll notice that Waypoint six is now south of us and it's turned off coupled steering mode and has reverted back to heading mode. And that's because there's actually no automatic sequencing feature. There is this auto button down here, which may be implemented in the future. This button would enable automatic sequencing. So that would change us from waypoint five to waypoint six in this example. But because that's not a feature yet, we have to manually change to the next waypoint. So I'm gonna to change to waypoint six and then re-enable the coupled steering mode up here to take us to that next waypoint. Now what I should do is instead of doing this after we cross the waypoint is just before I reach each waypoint, just advance the waypoint to the next one. So we don't have to then switch back from heading to coupled steering mode. Something really cool about using the coupled steering mode is I can also switch from altitude mode to flight path angle hold mode. And instead of even clicking that button, I'm just gonna start my descent by just simply pushing forward on my stick. So as soon as I do that, it'll automatically change to flight path angle hold. And now I'm just pulling down to about 2000 feet per minute, or whatever rate of descent I want. 
So up here you can see 2,300 feet per minute. And so I'm gonna start my descent. And now the heading mode switched again because I flew past the next waypoint, I forgot to switch it. So I'm gonna to switch to waypoint seven and go back to coupled steering mode to take us to waypoint seven, which is actually our last waypoint down to the runway. So even when it's in a bank like this, I can push the stick forward or back. As long as I'm careful not to bank and pull it out of coupled steering mode, I can pitch up and down while it's heading to the waypoint, which is really nice. So I'm gonna pull our throttle back quite a bit here and pitch down because I need to get down towards the airport elevation. So if I wanna know what the airport elevation is, I can go over to the HSI and just hit this data button right here, or I could put it on this side. So I'm gonna hit the bottom button twice and then hit HSI. And then this time I'm gonna hit data and this will show me data on my selected waypoint. Waypoint seven is the airport I'm headed to and its elevation right here is 200 feet. All right, so that covers all the main modes of the Super Hornet's autopilot system. The waypoint mode is definitely challenging to use, especially when you're coming in on a final approach. If you don't switch the waypoints soon enough, it'll be hard to line up with that runway. So you may need to switch over to track mode or something like that to try to line up that final course. As always, thank you for watching. Leave any questions, suggestions, and comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.